The beautiful Venazza, it's an amazing area of the world, uh, spectacular, the boats, it's a beautiful little sheltered harbour. We have the hillside buildings, the tower, it really is a scene that has everything. Uh, but sometimes those great scenes are technically difficult. I'll grab my brushes and let's see how I go. Uh, nothing like a, a blank board and the possibilities sometimes are endless. And that's where I do love to make sure I've got plenty of painting practice behind me before I really do attempt these more technically difficult paintings. This painting really is quite an intellectual sort of um, exercise. And it's a matter of uh, using technique and then trying to get the best out of ourselves with our learned skills. So this one, just trying to get that boat shape working. They're a little sort of foreshortened, which kind of sometimes can be a little tricky to get to work. And I'm going to have to be careful that I don't have a bit of a patchwork quilt going here with all sort of small shapes. So I'll have to make sure I unify all of these shapes. So it's going to be a really lovely and strong foreground, a very interesting background and then a, just a marvellous little hillside in the background there, just to round the whole painting out. So nothing like getting that bigger brush in. This is a 12 by 9 inch board, just to give you a bit of an idea of the scale. It's, it's pretty close to an ideal size, I find, working on site these days. Because there's one thing, it can go bigger, but the light does change quite dramatically. That's why I find the 9 by 12, sometimes 11 by 14, if it's not as complex scene as this. But um, I have done, I think about four teaching trips to Europe now and, uh, and I normally do get that hour to hour and a half. So this was a great one to do in this studio. Pretty, I could see it as a bit of a warm-up for when uh, I get back to Italy. And I think that's sometimes not a bad idea uh, when you're going to a new area just to either use Google Images or Pinterest or uh, Flickr, some of the image apps or sites just to get a bit of an idea of what subject matter you may encounter. And sometimes it can change or uh, save you quite a bit of time and may change your mind as to uh, what subjects you may encounter. Because we do sometimes go on painting trips with a bit of a preconceived idea. But um, it's just a way I find to maximise your time. Because ultimately when you're painting in an area you only have X amount of hours in the day or days that you may be staying at an area. So that's where the reference material can come into great use over the, the sort of the weeks and months after you've been on a painting trip. So this one's going to just take a little bit of work just to get my bearings they can be quite intimidating and a little overwhelming to get the complexity, but still simplify it to make it read well. And I think for me, that's the, the concept of simplification that I like to think with is how can I make this scene or grouping of shapes read to the viewer, but also make it interesting to the viewer as well. Uh, that's where I think use of brushwork and colour can really sort of um, enhance my painting or our painting. So you can see I've got that eclipse coma again. Now I've brought back the little stiff synthetic. The green handle one is the stiff synthetic. 
just if you're wanting to sort of keep an idea. I find this is a great brush when the paint is a little wet. Uh, there's occasions where the other more sort of eclipse combers, the more synthetic feeling brushes, they tend to struggle when it comes to working wet in wet. So I'll, on quite a few occasions, bring in the stiff synthetic brush. I find it just helps to push and move the paint around because it, of its nature. But I always use long flats, square long flats. I may use the odd uh, filbert to draw in, but it's really only just for drawing in because it has that nice sharp point at sort of a size six. But I'm not a big fan of brights. They're probably one of the uh, most common brushes that people buy but I've actually never bought one and I find that the nice long bristle gives me such a lovely variety in the brush mark. So I've got that sky in, the background hill in. Notice that I haven't really done too much with that background hill at this stage. I do love the thought process of the art of diminishing return. The further a shape of is away from us, the less we need visually from it. So we're pushing back the in making the background shapes recede. And now I'm working on the uh, foreground shapes to really maximize that field of depth. I do enjoy painting boats. Uh, a trip in 2013 to Greece really was a, uh, a marvelous uh, experience because we were confronted with a lot of boats and I thought if I can survive this I'll probably almost survive any port or shipyard or boatyard uh, subject and I'm pretty happy with how that lights coming on the right hand side. Thankfully I really concentrated on my drawing with this one uh, making sure I got the boats because they're in the foreground I really wanted them to really sing and really the tower the hillside was really just a backdrop an amazing backdrop that did sort of cause me a few little concerns, but um, that's why I think stepping back from the painting, um, having that room, that space to analyze the big shapes, uh, to see how things are going, it's so important. So hope you enjoyed it. All the best, bye for now.